In this video, we'll continue our look at motion. We'll look at acceleration. We'll define acceleration, derive a formula for acceleration, and we'll also derive the equations of motion for uniformly accelerated motion, right? So let's talk about acceleration. All right? Now, when most people hear the word acceleration or accelerate, they automatically think of something speeding up and increasing speed, right? What we will basically show is that acceleration not only, incre not only involves um, an increase in speed, it could also inc involve a decrease in speed. And as a matter of fact, it is possible for a body to be accelerating even while its speed is constant, right? So let's talk about acceleration. Now, acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. And as before, some books you may see the rate of change of velocity with time, but um, the words rate of change usually imply with time, and so is not absolutely necessary. So the rate of change of velocity, rate of change of velocity with time, right? So um, the symbol for acceleration is A, and the SI units is the meter per second squared. All right? Now, we would have met initial velocity U, and we would have met final velocity V. So we basically say that if a body's velocity, if a body's velocity changes from an initial value u to a final value v in time t its acceleration a is given by and the formula is A equals V minus U over T and this of course is our formula for calculating acceleration now if you notice that in defining acceleration we define it as the rate of change of velocity right now, while it is possible to calculate acceleration in terms of change in speed over time taken, acceleration is a vector quantity and, of course, is really defined in terms of velocity. But, of course, speed is simply velocity with no um, change in direction or where we don't need to, you know, um, be concerned about the, the direction then, right? So, if a body's direction is not changing, then essentially its speed will be equal to its um, the magnitude of its velocity, right? They will have the same magnitude. Good? So let's talk about acceleration a little bit more. So we define acceleration as the rate of change of a body's velocity. Now let's talk about uniform acceleration, right? Uniform acceleration. Now, similar to uniform velocity, where we said that a body's velocity is said to be uniform if its displacement changes by equal amounts in a given time period, we can say that a body's acceleration is said to be uniform body's acceleration is said to be uniform and of course uniform is just another word for constant so uniform if its velocity changes by equal amounts in a given time period right so a body's acceleration is said to be uniform if its velocity 
changes by equal amounts in a given time period. For instance, suppose a body is traveling with a uniform acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. What does this mean? Essentially, 5 meters per second squared is the same thing as 5 meter per second per second. So essentially, the body's velocity is increasing by 5 meters per second each second. How do we know it's an increase? Because the acceleration is positive. So typically, an increase in velocity is said to be an acceleration or a positive acceleration. Of course, if we're talking about um, um, about the speed increasing in a, in, a, in, a, in a direction we consider to be positive, right? So typically, an increase in velocity um, in a positive direction is said to be a positive acceleration, right? If the velocity on the other hand, or the acceleration rather, is minus 5 meters per second squared, then this basically would imply that the body's acceleration is decreasing, um, sorry, the body's velocity is decreasing by 5 meters per second every second, right? Now, we spoke about uniform acceleration. And we said that uniform acceleration means that the body's velocity is changing by equal amounts in a given time period, right? Now, earlier we mentioned that when many people hear the term accelerate, they automatically think of something speeding up, an increase in speed, right? Now, we know that basically acceleration not only refers to an increase in speed, but also a decrease in speed. And it is therefore also possible for a body to be accelerating even while its speed is constant. Now, how is that possible? You must remember that acceleration is a rate of change of velocity. Velocity is a vector quantity. And for a body's velocity change, it means either its speed and slash or its direction must change. So a body's velocity can be changing if it's traveling at a constant speed but changing direction, right? Whereas a body's velocity can be changing if its speed is changing, right? So any change in a body's velocity is an acceleration and a body can be accelerating even if its speed is constant and for that to happen, it means that the speed is constant but the body's direction is changing, right? Now, let's look at the equations of motion for uniform acceleration. So, equations of motion for uniform acceleration. Now, the first equation we'll start with by looking at is the one we derive for acceleration, A equals V minus U over T. We will take this equation and we will make V the subject of the equation, right? So to make V the subject of the equation, we must first get rid of the T in the denominator here. And since we're dividing by T, we must multiply both sides by T. So we get AT is equal to V minus U. And to get rid of this minus u, we must add u to both sides. And so we get u plus at is equal to v, or we can write v equals u plus at, right? And this is often referred to as the first equation of motion, right? This is often referred to as the first equation of motion. Good? v equals u plus at. Now, we'll derive the remaining equations of motion. Now, we must go back to the definition for average velocity. Average velocity let's call it V 
is equal to the net displacement s over t right now let's just leave out the symbol here so yeah average velocity right let's not put any symbol so the average velocity is equal to the dis net displacement divided by the time taken right however if we're talking about uniformly accelerated motion right the average velocity will simply be equal to the average of the initial and final velocities right so we say that basically since the acceleration a is uniform average velocity is equal to the average of the initial and final velocities so we're talking about two velocities and therefore to find their average we add them and divide by two and so the average velocity is equal to u plus v over two right the next step is to equate these two expressions and then um, obtain our second equation of motion this time we will get the equation in terms of the displacement s and so we have s over t is equal to u plus v over 2 which therefore means that s is equal to u plus v over 2 times t and this of course is another of our equations of motion now bear in mind that um, these are not always defined or derived rather in the same order so if you look in a textbook for instance and you see another equation listed at equation 2 that is perfectly okay right because there's no set rule which says that they must be defined in a particular order right the important thing is that we derive all the equations of motion for uniform acceleration right but let's just call this equation 2 So, so far, we have two equations, v equals u plus at, and s equals u plus v over 2 times t, right? Now, to get the next equation, what we're going to do is we're going to basically substitute for v into the second equation right so we're going to start off with this equation we're going to say s equals u plus v over 2 times t but v equals u plus a t so wherever there is v we replace it with u plus a t and so we get s is equal to u plus u plus a t all over 2 times t and so we have s is equal to 2 u plus a t over 2 times t we then expand the brackets and we multiply through by the t and so we get s is equal to 2 u t plus a t squared all over 2 then we divide through by 2 to get individual terms on the right hand side and so we get s is equal to ut plus a half a t squared right and this of course we'll treat as our third equation of motion now to obtain our fourth equation of motion what we will do is we will take the equation for acceleration or equation for velocity and we will make t the subject and we will then substitute into equation 2 right so from this equation so we get a equals v minus u over t which means that a t is equal to v minus u which further implies that t 
is equal to V minus U over A. And so we will substitute T equals V minus U over A into this equation, right? Into equation 2. So, writing back equation 2, we have S equals U plus V over 2 times T. But of course, T equals V minus U over A. So, we get that S is equal to U plus V over 2 times V minus U over A. Right? Now, looking at this, then u plus v, same thing as v plus u, so the same thing as v plus u over a times v minus u over, sorry, v plus u over 2 times v minus u over a. And so we expand the brackets, right? Now, usually, we would then take our time, multiply each term in the second bracket by each term in the first, but of course, at this level, you expect to recognize certain things. So V plus U times V minus U will multiply to give what is called the difference of two squares. And we'll simply multiply the numerators together. And so we get S is equal to V squared minus U squared over 2A. This time, of course, we will make V squared a subject. So from which we get that, multiply both sides by 2A, we get 2AS is equal to v squared minus u squared and therefore u squared plus 2as is equal to v squared and therefore what we have is that v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as and this is a fourth of um, our equations of motion right call it equation four now usually most textbooks will stop at these four equations, right? But there is a fifth, which is somewhat controversial, um, and it is basically related, it is related to this equation three, and for the sake of completeness, we will derive that equation as well. Now, to derive that equation, we will start off with equation 2. And what we will do is to substitute um, for, let me see if I remember. We will substitute this time for u, right? So we will su we'll substitute for u. So it is similar to the derivation of this equation, but instead of substituting for v, we will substitute for u. Right? So if we start with equation um, v equals u plus a t, then from this we get that u equals v minus a t. Then we will use S equals V plus U over 2 times T. And then we will say, but U equals V minus AT. And we will then substitute for V and we will simplify to get the last equation. So continuing from there, we get that S equals V plus V minus AT over 2 
times t. And so this gives us s is equal to 2v minus a t all over 2 times t. So multiplying out through t, we get s is equal to 2vt minus a t squared all over 2. And then dividing through by 2, we get that s is equal to vt minus a half a t squared. And of course, we can call this equation 5. All right? Now, many people think that that fifth equation is unnecessary, which um, might be true. But of course, the equation still applies. And once used accurately, it will always give the same value or the same result as any of the other um, four equations of motion. Right? So we will end the session by summarizing the equations of motion that we would have derived. Um, they are V equals U plus AT. We have S equals U plus V over 2 times T. We also have S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. We also have V squared equals U squared plus 2as and lastly we have s equals vt minus a half at squared all right so these essentially are the five equations of motion for uniform acceleration or for uniformly accelerated motion. Now, which equation you use will depend basically on the information you're given and sometimes it may depend on which equation you simply prefer or which equation might be the most straightforward of the five to use, right? So for instance, if you're given initial velocity u, acceleration a, and t, and you want to find v, you can simply use equation 1, right? Um, if you're also given the, um, let's say you're given the displacement as well, then you could also use equation 4, u squared plus 2as, two, two right? So again, which, which equation you use will depend on the information you're given at the time, or in some cases where you have information you could use more than one equation, it simply comes down to personal choice.